Welcome to Learn This Game, where you can learn about board games and how they are played. Today, we'll be looking at Mr. Jack. In this video, there'll be a general description and overview of the game. We'll inventory the components, and we'll go through gameplay, including setup, sample turns, and victory conditions. In the description, there'll be some helpful links and a timestamp index. If you want to go straight to the setup and gameplay, you can go to the timestamp index now in the description. If you find this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and share. You can also leave a comment to share your experience with this game, or let us know what game you'd like to see reviewed. Mr. Jack's most recently revised edition was published by Hurricane in 2006 and has two designers. In this two-player game of deduction, one player is Jack the Ripper attempting to escape capture by the detective, who is played by the second player. An app is not required, and there are no standalone apps. The game is recommended for ages 9 and up. The difficulty level is low, and each game takes about 30 minutes to play. The game is designed for two players who play competitively against each other. There are expansions that provide additional characters for the base game. There is also a sequel set in New York and a standalone small card game derived from the base game. Now that you've seen a brief introduction to the game, let's get into the game itself. Mr. Jack is a two-player game of deduction that uses a board, counters, and cardboard cards. Dice are not used. Thematically, the game involves a search for Jack the Ripper by the authorities. Now let's see how the game is won. The game board represents Whitechapel with its poorly lit alleyways. There are three possible ways to end the game. Jack wins if the character token he is using can escape through one of the four exits. However, Jack cannot escape an exit if it is blocked by one of the two police barricades. And he can only escape if the witness card is showing the invisible side during the round. The second way Jack can win is if he continues to evade capture by the end of the eighth turn. The third ending involves the detective moving a character onto the same hex as Jack to confront him. If the accusation is correct, the detective wins the game. But if the detective is wrong, Jack escapes during the confusion and wins the game. Now let's review the components. Mr. Jack includes one eight-page color rulebook. There is one mounted, foldable board picturing the Whitechapel district divided into hexes. The right side of the board features a turn track where each turn is referred to as a round. There are eight alibi cards with red backs picturing one character each. There are eight character cards with green backs picturing one character each, in addition to symbols showing their movement and special ability. There is one witness card with invisible and visible sides. There are several counters in the game. These include two police cordon tokens, two covered manhole tiles, and six lit gaslight tiles numbered 1 to 4 with two unnumbered tiles. There are also several round plastic tokens. You will have to apply stickers onto the appropriately colored tokens before you play your first game. There is one gray token that is used to keep track of the turns. There are eight character tokens of eight different colors. Each token has stickers on both sides. The solid colors show the suspect side and the gray shows the innocent side. Now let's set up the game for our sample playthrough. First, unfold the board and place it in the play area. Next, place the turn counter onto the first base on the turn track. Then decide which player will be Jack and which player will be the detective. Jack sits on the side of the board with the gray edge and sees the board upside down. Gray symbols on the turn track will refer to Jack. The detective faces the board in the upright position with the yellow edge in front of him. Yellow symbols on the turn track will refer to the detective. There is a two-page foldout at the back of the rulebook that shows where to place the tokens and tiles at the beginning of the game. We place the two police cordon tiles at the bottom left and top right alleys on the board. We then place the closed sewer tiles on the manholes in front of the blocked alleys. We place the six gaslight tiles as shown on the rulebook foldout. We also place the eight character tokens per the rulebook foldout. The character tokens are placed face up showing their suspect sides which are displayed in full color. Next, we shuffle the eight green character cards and place them face down in a single stack near the board. We then shuffle the eight red alibi cards and also place them face down in a single stack near the board. The witness card is placed visible side up to start the game. Being visible means that Jack cannot escape during the first round. The player playing Jack draws one alibi card, secretly reads it, and places it face down in front of him. For this game playthrough, we will say Jack drew the alibi card for Miss Stealthy. This will be the character that Jack will be impersonating during the game. This alibi card is not shown to the player who is the detective. Now let's see how the game is played. 
The game is played in a series of rounds and is tracked on the right side of the board. To show how the game is played, we'll be playing the first round, which involves the detective and Jack each taking their turn. Let's take a closer look at the round track. There are a total of eight rounds. Again, if Jack is not captured by the end of round eight, he wins the game. We'll examine the round one space for this round's instructions. The number at the bottom indicates the round number. The next area shows the order in which players choose their characters. The colors of these card symbols are the same as that of the board edges in front of each player. So yellow indicates the detective and gray is for Jack. So during odd numbered rounds, the detective will choose one character card to play. Jack will then select two and the detective will play the final character card. During even numbered rounds, Jack goes first. Once the four characters have been played, Jack must declare whether he is visible or invisible. He must be invisible in order to successfully leave the area during the next round. Finally, the gaslight tile numbered 1 is removed from the game at the end of round 1. One gaslight tile is removed per round for the first four rounds only. The round counter is then moved one space up the round track. When moving characters on the board, one thing to keep in mind is whether a character is visible or invisible. If a character counter is next to a lit gaslight, such as these two characters, or is next to another character, they are considered visible. Characters such as this one who is not next to a lit gaslight and is not next to another character is considered invisible. These statuses will become important during the witness phase. Now let's begin round one. The first step in the round involves choosing and using the characters. During each round, a total of four characters are played, two by each player. The first four characters are drawn and placed face up. As we've seen on the round track, recall that the first turn shows that the detective who is represented by the yellow symbol will go first and choose one character card to play. Jack is represented by the gray symbols and will play the next two character cards. Finally, the detective will play the last card. The detective selects the character Sir William Gull, whose purple character counter is at the top of the board. Each character when used must move and or use a special ability. The symbols on the card indicate what the special ability of each character is and when it must or can be used. The silver circle on the left side of the card shows the possible movement of the character. Characters cannot move through structures, gardens, or gas lights. The golden circle on the right side shows the ability of the character. The shape of the area shows when the ability can be used. So on this character card, he can move one to three spaces, or he can trade places with any other character. The rulebook has a complete listing of the symbols and special abilities. The detective moves the character two spaces to keep him away from the gas lights and therefore to remain invisible. The character card is then placed face down in a discard pile. Jack then selects two character cards, Miss Stealthy and Sherlock Holmes. According to his character card, Sherlock Holmes must move one to three spaces, and after he moves, according to the arrow pointing to the right of the golden circle, he must secretly draw an alibi card and place it face down in front of the player using the character card. Jack moves the Sherlock Holmes counter one space away from the gaslight to make him invisible, since the detective just moved a character to be invisible. Jack draws the alibi card for John Smith, but does not show it to the detective. Jack places the alibi card face down in front of him. This means the detective cannot draw this alibi card in the future to prove John Smith's innocence, but must rely on deduction to eliminate this character as a suspect. The Sherlock Holmes card is then placed face down in the discard pile. Jack then plays the Miss Stealthy card, which is also a secret identity. She can move one to four hexes and her optional special ability allows her to move through buildings, gas lights, and gardens, but she must end her move on a street hex. Jack moves her character counter one space away from the nearest gas light to keep her invisible and chooses not to use her special ability this round. The card is then placed face down in the discard pile. The detective plays the last character, Sergeant Goodley. Sergeant Goodley must move one to three spaces. His special ability is mandatory and can be employed before or after his movement as he sees fit. He gets three movement points to apply to one, two, or three characters to move them closer to his position. He can apply all three mandatory movement points to one character or spread them out to up to three characters. Whichever characters are selected, they must end up closer to Sergeant Goodley than where they started. There are currently five invisible characters and three visible ones. First, he'll move one space to be next to a lit gaslight. This means that there are now four visible and four invisible characters. In order to keep this ratio in anticipation of the witness phase, Sergeant Goodley moves Jeremy Burt one space closer to himself 
placing that character in invisible status away from the lit gaslight. Sergeant Goodley then applies the two remaining moves to Watson to bring him two spaces closer to himself and places Watson next to a lit gaslight, converting him from invisible to visible. Strategically, this leaves half of the characters visible and the other half invisible, which means the detective can eliminate half of the characters during the witness phase. Sergeant Goodley's card is then placed in the discard pile, ending the use of character cards this turn. Now that the four character cards have been played this round, there is a call for witnesses. As stated, there are four invisible characters because they are not next to lit gaslights or other characters. The other four characters are considered visible because they are next to lit gaslights. Recall that at the beginning of the game, Jack drew the alibi card for Miss Stealthy as the character he is impersonating, so he must declare himself invisible since Miss Stealthy is not next to a lit gaslight and is not next to another character. The witness card is then turned to the invisible side and will remain so throughout the next round. All of the visible characters are deemed innocent and are turned over to the innocent side. The detective now knows that Jack is impersonating one of the four remaining characters. The round track reminds us that at the end of the round, we remove Gaslight Tile number 1 from the board for the rest of the game. We now refer to the round track for round 2. The colored symbols show that in this even numbered round, the last four character cards will be drawn and Jack will go first instead of the detective. Like the last round, the four character cards will be played. Then Jack will have to declare if he is visible or invisible, and the appropriate character tokens will be flipped over to their innocent side, if any. Finally, at the end of round two, gaslight tile number two is removed from the board. At the end of each even numbered round, all eight character cards will have been played, so they will need to be reshuffled to start a new character deck for the next round. This concludes the sample turns for Mr. Jack. Let's review the winning conditions of the game. In this sample game, Jack was impersonating Miss Stealthy because of the alibi card he drew during game setup. In order for Jack to win, he must exit through one of the alleys not blocked off by the police. There will be opportunities during the game to move the police barricades, so they will not always be blocking the same alleys. The witness card must also be showing its invisible side during the round for Jack to escape. Jack also wins if he is not caught by the end of the 8th round. In order for the detective to win, he must first deduce the character Jack is impersonating. The detective must then manage to move any of the other characters onto the same hex as Jack and make the accusation. If the detective is correct, the detective wins. If the detective accuses the wrong character, Jack immediately wins by taking advantage of the confusion to escape. If the detective knows whom Jack is impersonating, but cannot physically accuse and capture him by the end of round 8, Jack still escapes. This concludes this review of Mr. Jack. Visit us at these sites and don't forget to leave a comment to share your experience with the game or to let us know what games you'd like to see reviewed. And if you'd like to experience something more exciting than lurking in the dark back alleys and sewers of London, stick around for our disclaimer, coming up next. <laughs>